So this is a typical example of exactly what we've been talking about, changes happening uh, during an investment time. Okay, so here we have uh, Tanda again, and we're told that Tanda invests 120,000 Rand. He's quoted a nominal interest rate of 7.2% per annum, compounded monthly. And now they say, suppose Tanda invests his money for a total period of four years, but after 18 months makes a withdrawal of 20,000 Rand. How much will he receive at the end of four years? So let's just, it seems like a lot, so let's just simplify it by drawing for ourselves a timeline. So a timeline, we see that something is happening after 18 months. So this, this gives me some idea, because this is not in terms of years, it might be better to work in terms of months. So let's change everything to months. Instead of talking about four years, and, and it's not a bad idea, I mean, they, we're talking about compounded monthly, so we are in fact working with, um, with months. But instead of working out the effective interest rate per year, let's rather stick to the effective interest rate per month which is this 7.2 divided by 12. Okay, and we're changing everything to months. In four years, how many months are there? Well, we just multiply by 12 because there's 12 months in a year, so that's 48 months. And then at about 18 months, it doesn't matter whether it's on scale, 18 months, something happens. Okay, so the interest rate doesn't change over this whole time period. So I can just keep in mind that my interest rate is 7,2 divided by 12. Okay, very important, I am working with effective interest rate. What is actually happening, either per month or per year, I'm working with what's actually happening per month and then changing all of my time periods to months. Okay, so let's see what is happening on this thing. First of all, he invests 120,000 and then at 18 months he's making a withdrawal almost thinking of it as a negative investment okay a withdrawal and that's it and we are asked to find the future value this obviously being the present value there's some withdrawal here along the way and this is how we're going to do it don't go and rem try and remember those formulas simply treat these two investments separately Okay, so we're going to first see what's going to happen to the 120,000 in the end. Then we're going to see what happens to the negative investment in the end. And we subtract those two values and we should get the amount in the bank at the end. So, let's go ahead. First of all, P is equal to 120,000. Interest will remain constant at 7.2 divided by 12%, which gives me 0 0.06. 0 Zero zero six. Okay, I've also divided with the hundred. My number of time periods. Remember, I'm looking at this whole event. That is forty-eight months. So I'm earning interest forty-eight times. And finally, um, I'm just going to put all of this into my formula to calculate how much would have been in the bank account if he hasn't, uh, or if he didn't have the twenty thousand withdrawal so it's a hundred and twenty thousand invested for four years one plus zero comma zero zero six for four years which is 48 months and that gives me an answer of let's work it out 120 one two three times 1.006 to the power of 48 and that is 159,913 159,913 and uh, let's use as many of the commas as I can 202442 comma 202444 
two, nine, and it goes on. Okay, only round off in your final answer. So next up, let's go and have a look what this hundred and twenty thousand unfortunately included the twenty thousand which he withdrew. So we need to subtract that effect. So let's see. The present value is negative twenty thousand. Okay. The interest rate has not changed, 0 0.006, but what has changed is the number of times interest is added. Okay, we're only going to work with this time period. Okay, and this time period would be, there's 48 in total, but there's 18 months not included, which means there's 30 months in that time period. So n would be 30 times that interest is added on or was subtracted from here. Okay, so to work that out, the future value of this would be negative 20,000, 1 plus 0, 0, 0,006 for a time period of 30. And that gives us... 20, 1, 2, 3, it's a negative number, multiplied by this bracket, 1.006, close the bracket to the power of 30, that gives me negative 23,931, okay, negative 23,931, few more commas, 47226, four seven two two six and now if I go and take these two amounts and I subtract them from each other or if I add them together actually uh, that one already has the negative let's see what we have so what is in the end the actual future value okay okay one five nine nine one three point two one two zero two four four two nine could do more commas minus twenty three thousand nine hundred and thirty one point four seven two two six okay and they rounded to two decimal places gives me one three five nine eight one one three five nine eighty one comma seventy three and there we go. That is the amount that will be in the account at the end. You could have also, if you wanted to, go and work out the present value. In other words, just take this for 18 months, get a present value. Then from that present value, subtract the 20,000. Now you have a new present value. And with that new present value, let's call it P1, you do for 30 time periods the same thing you did for the first 18 time periods. Uh, there you go. It's not that bad. Just break it up into a timeline and you should just be fine.